In this presentation, I will discuss some key points uh, of the report, which concern uh, the case of Finland situation in Finland, and, and uh, I will also say a few words about uh, about the banning of the Nordic resistance movement in Finland and uh, also its consequences, what happened after the ban, because that's of course important uh, for other others also uh, who, with, uh, who perhaps are con concerning considering uh, considering measures against extreme right movements. So it's a kind of important case to follow. Uh, but first, first of all, just a few words about uh, how uh, the extreme right movements or extreme right or violent extremism in general is, is tackled in Finland. Uh, what kind of measures have been taken in Finland uh, regarding these issues? So preventing violent extremism in, in Finland is based on the Danish model or so-called Aarhus model, which uh, uh, emphasizes uh, the inter-administrative work with local author authorities and communities. And the uh, Finnish model as well as uh, in Denmark as well, uh, cover all forms of extremism. And uh, the preventive measures are coordinated by the Ministry of Interior. Uh, Alongside with these measures, we have had also a so-called exit program, which however was discontinued in 2018 and relaunched in 2020. These uh, pro both programs have been, have been uh, realized by the NGOs uh, and uh, typically also, also had some certain kind of problems with continuity because of lack of funding and so on. These are, I guess, quite typical problems when uh, working with the NGOs. And also, of course, it's, it's not that easy always to find a suitable partner for, for example, exit programs. Uh, regarding the legislation in Finland, uh, well, there has been only one case where terrorism related crimes have been, have been actually uh, few cases which are prosecuted, but only one conviction so far that is to Islamist terror attack in 2017. Uh, to some extent, perhaps this is uh, the lack of prosecution is uh, due to the relatively narrow definition, legal definition of terrorism in Finland, which is based on the seriousness of the case. Some authorities have considered, considered that the uh, bar for prosecuting these cases, terrorism cases, are actually too high. Uh, some new legislation also has been proposed, which would, for example, make it illegal to join a terrorist organization, but this is uh, still, I suppose, under discussion. But there are, of course, other means available when uh, trying to tackle extremism or uh, right-wing extremism or any, any other form of extremism. For example, the Nordic resistance movement, when it was banned in 2020 by the Supreme Court, it was actually made on the basis of Associations Act. Uh, also, racist motive may be considered uh, as an aggravating circumstance when imposing a penalty, and this is also something that was used uh, against uh, one member of the Nordic resistance movement a uh, few years ago. And also quite recent cases uh, that the Nordic resistance movement was investigated for incitement when using swastika flags. So there are uh, other ways than just uh, terrorism uh, provisions to tackle extremist movements. So which are the most important right-wing extremist organization in Finland? Uh, well, as mentioned, Nordic resistance movement in Finland, it's, was, it was banned in 2020, and uh, it has been uh, maybe the most important neo-Nazi group in Finland. It was founded after a Swedish model in 2008 and became, uh, grew to, uh, consists of around 100 activists, uh, not including all the supporting members. There have been something like 200 or even more supporting members. And we don't know exact, exact figures for those. Many of these uh, members had background in skinhead or other subcultures. Uh, Nordic resistance movement in Finland as elsewhere has been a hierarchical and uh, very militant organization and they do not shy away from using violence. 
However, when compared, comparing the Ronnie Christmas movement in, for example, in Sweden, Finns have engaged, engaged relatively rarely in violent attacks. Most of the violence uh, which has happened in the context uh, has happened in the context of uh, demonstrations or street activism of the Nordic resistance movement. They are, to some extent, one would call them uh, defensive after some kind of a provocation, although bar for starting violent activism seems actions seems to be quite low. Uh, recurring uh, recurring uh, violent attacks led to the landing of the Nordic resistance movement. Uh, process which started in 2017 after one one attack in Helsinki. Another important uh, group uh, from especially from the transnational perspective is uh, Shoulders Odin, which started in Finland in 2000, in autumn 2015. It has been uh, is still existing and it's a vigilante street patrol organization. Uh, and uh, at best it has had as many as uh, 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 chapters, international chapter, as many as in 30 countries or even more at some stages. Uh, and uh, they grew quite rapidly after the so-called uh, refugee crisis in, in 2015. Uh, at best, they had more than uh, 600 members, but this uh, number has been drastically since then. Uh, interesting also in Solus Vodin is that it was uh, built around Facebook groups and uh, based also on a franchise model. So it was very easy to start new chapter of Solus Vodin wherever in the world you might be. So uh, as, as we know that there used to be Solus Vodin chapters as far as in Australia. Uh, and there, then of course there are uh, several subcultural groups, most important perhaps is uh, the Blood and Honor, which is uh, quite old in Finland, also started first Blood and Honor movement in Finland started already in the 1990s, and some after some discontinuation, it restarted in 2003. Uh, regarding financing of the extreme right organizations in Finland, as far as it is known, the extreme right organizations in Finland have been mostly self-funded. And uh, at least in mo most, at least in most known cases, they also use only legal means to get funds for oper their operations. Key sources for of revenue are have been membership fees, sales of merchandise, record sales, and concerts. And lo lots of this also happens. For example, sales of merchandise or rec record sales uh, happens online. And uh, these days also some online concerts have been organized. Uh, they also accept donations which are made by using bitcoins. Try to maintain anonymity way that. Uh, to show the scale of the operation, some exact figures are actually known from the Nordic resistance movement annual revenues from their webshop and their membership fees, which were in total uh, around 17,000 euros in 2015. So it's not very big, but uh, big enough uh, to operate also internationally, transnationally. So the Svodin had been much, in much better position uh, because they gathered uh, membership fees from these more than 30 foreign chapters. And in total, it was uh, the sums were in more than ten, thousands of uh, tens of thousands of euros. But uh, also there's some problems with uh, this kind of funding system because several several international foreign chapters refused to pay and decided to leave the Solus Vodin in 2016 and 17. Now Solus Vodin has something like uh, less less than five countries represented uh, in their network. So regarding international connections uh, or already referred to, Nordic resistance movement in Finland has had several links with German organizations and it appears that some of these links still exist even after the Nordic resistance movement was banned in Finland. Some former members have taken part, for example, in demonstrations in 2020 in Germany and uh, in other countries, I suppose, as well. Uh, also, uh, one of the key links uh, for the Nordic resistance movement has been a uh, national action in the UK, very close associate with the Finnish Nordic resistance movement. Uh, they supported each other ideologically and have had uh, even some membership exchange. 
one member of uh, of the Nordic National Action who used to used to belong to non resistance movement and was uh, convicted for his uh, membership in National Action. Uh, during the Russo-Ukrainian War, Finnish Nordic Resistance Movement chapter has sided mostly with Ukraine, although a few members have pro-Putin attitudes, attitudes as well. Finnish neo-Nazis have had contacts with uh, Russian groups like uh, Wotan Jugend, which however oppose Putin and are pro-Ukraine. Uh, Soldiers born in international network pretty much has said collapsed uh, around 2016 or 2017 much due to the internal schism Finns wanted membership fees which foreign chapters refused to pay there are also lots of contacts uh, uh, at the sub subcultural scene in Finland uh, uh, transnational contacts uh, they uh, visit each other's uh, uh, concerts events and also some sometimes record to get together and then also finance the transnational movement by recording albums and selling the, selling those online. Uh, short uh, diagram part uh, about the key events in Finland. Uh, arguably, the 2015 refugee crisis was the key moment in mobilization of the far right in Finland and after the wave of. Uh, it was followed by certain kind of uh, way of way of violence, such as arson attacks against refugee reception centers uh, uh, in autumn 2015 and 2016 spring. Uh, after that, uh, violence has not been so so prominent part of the extremist scene in Finland. Even after 2017, Turku Islamist terrorist attacks were accent to the far right were mostly verbal, not no physical. Uh, violence actually followed. Uh, 2015 attacks were also influenced by the similar attacks in Sweden and Germany. Uh, violent riots, uh, which I already mentioned, uh, then for, uh, caused uh, the ban of the Nordic Resistance Movement in 2020. One notable event perhaps was also that Finns party uh, turned to radical, more radical direction in 2017. And well, to some some extent, this also affected the extreme right scene because they now had some someone uh, who perhaps better represented their views also. And uh, here, as, as a table, also uh, shows that 2015 was kind of peak year when when uh, hate crimes study, study, uh, hate crimes uh, peaked in Finland, and later this has been abated. So what happened after the Nordic Resistance Movement was banned in Finland in 2020? It was a long process uh, and since then they have tried to circumvent the ban in several ways, although we have had no actual violent uh, counter reactions. Former members have been to some extent active within their former international networks. They have also founded several new organizations, some of which are investigated or waiting for the prosecutor's decision for illegally continuing banned organizations. Uh, notable is, however, that these new groups have been less visible and in general are also less active, and they also have less members than the previous organization. As the website was closed also, they uh, lost their funds and uh, they, this also shows in their activism. Uh, and to some extent also that groups are less visible applies to the extreme right scene in Finland in general. Uh, it also appears that uh, neo-Nazi groups or activists try to use more decentralized organizational structure these days. Some have also suggested forms of accelerationism or, or leaderless less resistance as a viable option, option to continue the activism. Most of the activist activities happen now in their own message messaging groups in Telegram and other channels, partly, of course, due to the pandemic, so they cannot have street activism these days. Uh, despite the ban of the Nordic resistance movement, Finnish security policies in the light of the international development far right as a growing threat. Uh, this is, of course, among other things, because of the links to international terrorist media, which mostly happens in online environment.